National's new deputy, Dr Shane Reti, says he answers to his dream leader, Judith Collins, but will be consulted on key strategy and the soon-to-be-announced portfolio reshuffle. Jerry Brownlee resigned from the deputy's job following National's thrashing at the election, and the party is waiting on an internal review into what went wrong. Judith Collins was confirmed as party leader at National's caucus meeting today, and Shane Reti, who lost his Whangarei electorate seat, was appointed her deputy, uncontested. Dr Shane Retty, Deputy Leader of the National Party. How does that sound to you? Well, Lisa, that's a, a privilege and, and a dream beyond which I thought I could dream, but uh, today I've been really honoured to have the support of my colleagues and asked to step up to this role. Why did you think it was a dream beyond what you could dream? You know, my, my first task is to be the best MP that I possibly can be for Whangarei. Anything beyond that uh, is a dream. Is this you excited? This is me excited. <laughs> you uh, mentioned today that you consider Judith Collins to be the dream leader. Tell us, you know, the two things that you like most about Judith Collins. Oh, Judith is very straight. Uh, you'll never die wondering what Judith is thinking. And uh, I found her to be very honest, very honest in my dealings with Judith. Uh, we've had this over a number of years. And I think that's what caucus could see as well. We have a working relationship that is well founded, well grounded, and we can work together as an excellent team. And I think that was very appealing to caucus. So how do you see that relationship working? Are you, are you partners? Is she your boss? Will you get consulted on the big decisions? Practically, how's it going to work? Judith's my boss. I answer to Judith Collins as the leader, as we all do. And then between us as a partnership and as a collaboration, uh, we'll be setting big strategy uh, in collaboration with caucus, setting party directions, setting out how we might get back the Treasury benches in 2023. So she's considering reshuffling the portfolios at the moment. Are you going to be involved in that? Is she consulting you about those decisions? Uh, up until five minutes ago, I was doing exactly that. And as soon as I'm finished here, I'll be going back to do exactly that again. All right, so what do you think is the direction that the National Party should be headed in? So um, we're going to be guided by that from our internal review and uh, that will help us shape and, and redevelop our relevance and credibility out in the community, which it would seem to be has been a consequence of this recent election result. So what do you reckon went wrong? Oh, I think our internal review will point that out, so I'm not going to preempt that. There were internal factors, yeah, but you that's must, what we're you looking must have at, some ideas. and external factors. You must have uh, some yes, ideas. Yes, I do, and we'll put them all together through the correct process and uh, filter them out and figure out how we make them better. At a time when the country perhaps needed unity, at a time of crisis, do you think that the tone of the National Party was slightly off? Hmm. I think there are many examples where our tone was maybe right on. We were really encouraging of closing the borders when it was appropriate. Um, and we've always tried to collaborate as best we can in our position as opposition to critique the government. And then, of course, our, our wishes to critique and then to collaborate to raise our collective bar. That's how I frame it. So I think there are examples of where we've actually done uh, quite well and we have met the need to, to, to lift our collective bar. But when you get an absolute butt kicking, you're not looking at what you got right, you're looking at what you got wrong. So were there times that you got the tone wrong? Oh, look, I, I think there could always be times we've got the tone wrong and there may be times coming forward in the future and we're going to try our very best to mitigate that. So um, looking backwards, maybe there are things that we would do differently. That, that's which, what we're looking which things at are you now. Which things are you well, thinking, with, Shane, and, and which examples where you got the tone wrong? Well, it's, uh, I mean... the. the whether the tone was right is the view of the people and it's for them to really say look oh, we think this tone was wrong and, and what the community has said is, is really that definition of whether the tone was right or wrong. We may have one view, we projected it on the day, it's whether New Zealanders uh, feel that oh, that was the right tone or maybe it wasn't. So, well you for example, you lost an enormous majority in Whangarei. What went wrong for you? I think uh, that same mix maybe for us across all of the party, those external and internal factors, the external factors that we couldn't control, that red surge across the country, and then some of our internal factors that we're looking at as well. Uh, that affected me in Whangarei, just like it has many of my colleagues, many of my very good colleagues who unfortunately won't be coming back. I'm privileged to be able to do that. So I think it's that mix of things that affected all MPs uh, across the country, affected me as well.
What, what do you mean by internal factors? Because you really are sounding like a politician right now. What do you mean <laughs> when you say internal factors affected well, the loss of your majority? You, you well, had an 11,000 majority and it I, I, disappeared. I, I, why? Uh, no, I was victor on the night, and uh, then with special votes, I was uh, 500 votes behind. No, no, but previously, um, but previously, the last election, you won that seat by about 11,000 votes. So that, that huge majority that you, you'd previously um, been the ban- benefactor of disappeared into the ether. So, yeah, there might have been a couple of hundred votes in it in 2020, but that majority dissolved. So what went catastrophically wrong for you in that electorate? So your, your question was around uh, some of the internal things and uh, there are times that I think we've acknowledged and the need has acknowledged that maybe we shot ourselves in the foot with some of the things we said or some of the things we did and this of course is what the internal review is looking at and that had an impact on my electorate as well, just like it did with other electorates. So is Jerry Brownlee the sacrificial lamb for the internal failings of the National Party? No, not at all. Uh, Jerry, of his own volition, uh, relinquished the deputy leadership role. Does losing your seat mean that you're going to have more time to dedicate to this role as deputy leader? Oh, that's interesting. Look, uh, my observation in the first couple of days is that the needs of the people of Whangarei are unchanged. I'm still receiving many constituent inquiries and it be my privilege to continue to work of course, with the people of Whangarei. So I can't tell here at this point in time. It depends uh, how much of that constituency uh, resource is required of me. So uh, it's uncertain at this point.